the 14th chapter of the book of Matthew, uh, verses 25 to 29. And if you have it, say amen. The subject that I'm going to be sharing with you about this morning is called shifting into the supernatural faith. This is a passage, a familiar passage of scripture that we all know. And it reads, In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out, went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straight away Jesus back unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if thou be, bide me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And Peter was come down out of the ship, and he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Father, I come to you this morning. I ask you that you bless your word. I ask you, O Lord God, that you minister, O Lord, to your people. Father, I thank you that you have given me this task to stand in front of royal priesthood, O God, and sharing unto the hearts, O Lord, what you desire for us to partake. Father, as you have prepared this bread for us, O Lord, from the beginning of creation, I ask you, O Lord God, that you break it in such a manner, O Lord God, that is easy for us to digest, but yet, O Lord God, take us to the next level that needs us to go in you. Father, I pray that your word be rich this morning, O Lord God, and my words be few, O God. Let your spirit, O God, go forth, O God, anoint every ear that have to hear what the Spirit has to say unto them. For, O Lord God, an anointed word needs an anointed ear to receive and obey. In Jesus' name I pray. We live this life based on information, education, experience that we have received to bring us into a realm of truth based on our different cultures and how we were brought up. We have accepted something to be true and fact of life. Uh, we live uh, our spiritual life and our doctrinal belief based on our cultural upbringings, teaching and information that we have received over time. Uh, however, all that we know has caused us to stay in a safe and limited place. Uh, the subject that God has laid on my heart this morning to share with you about walking and shifting into a supernatural faith is not a subject that a safe journey, a safe place will allow you to enter into. Uh, I've been torn in my heart whether I should preach two sermons to you this morning because we like to build nests around us that keeps us safe. But those nests that we build around us based on our safety and understanding will cause us to be limited to what God wants to do. Because as much as those nests that we build, as much as those wisdom and understanding that we have in life that protects us and keeps us, it also keeps God out of us and keeps God out of our life. Uh, this is a subject that God wants me to share and teach with you, to, to you this morning because I believe that God wants us to go to a higher level. He wants us to gear up to a, to a greater level because life will serve you and handle, hand you all sorts of situations. But in order for you to overcome and be able to live a life more abundantly, you need to be able to shift into another gear or you will lose or left, be left behind. Many people lost their jobs when few years after computers were introduced. Uh, 
uh, into the market. Please bear with me. I'm going somewhere with this this morning uh, because I want you to understand that we, there has to be a shifting of mind before we can step out of the boat. There has to be a shifting of our understanding of who God wants us to be to leave the safe zone. Uh, when, when, the, the, when computers were introduced into the job market, uh, experts of trades were had no, no longer expertise. They thought that the expertise will keep their jobs safe for a long time, but they did not understand that if they do not re-educate themselves, if they do not shift their mind and step out of the comfort zone, supervisor for 10-15 years of their life and did not understand if they do not shift over and shift out of the comfort zone, they would lose their job. Suddenly the expert became a somebody that did not know anything and suddenly is somebody that decided to shift their mindset and learn about the computers became somebody. The worker became the supervisor and the supervisor became suddenly the worker or they lost their job completely. Uh, we also see that the experts in, in the business world that didn't want to change because they felt the dot-com world uh, era would not affect them but the dot-com era brought some high school dropouts and made them millionaires and caused some millionaires to become broke. Uh, wealthy companies who thought internet will never uh, be a threat to them because people love them more, uh, love the, allow them to become the lovers of their own understanding and fall into the destiny of their own death and being broke. Uh, companies such as Blockbuster and Rogers Video, uh, in fact, uh, Blockbuster was uh, approached by Netflix originally. Netflix uh, founders came to uh, uh, the CEO and uh, the executives of Blockbuster, they pitched the idea to, to them and they said, here is an idea, we are going to tell you that we're going to offer a service on internet for $7.99 a month and people are going to subscribe to this and they're going to watch movie over internet streaming and, net, uh, and, uh, and Blockbuster CEO and executives told them, you are crazy. Nobody will pay you $7.99 a month and watch some old movies on internet. They will, your idea is not going anywhere. Please do not waste your money. Please do not invest any more in this idea. Please take it and leave because it's not going anywhere. And the founders of Netflix looked at them and said, we're so sorry that you're going to go bankrupt. Ten years after the idea was pitched to them, Blockbuster went into bankruptcy to a place that the new generation doesn't know even know what a Blockbuster is. <laughs> the new generation does not know, even know what a video store is. They don't even care about a video store because it's all video streaming. It's all over the internet. It's on demand. I don't need to go any longer into a store and wonder whether they have my favorite video. Maybe somebody has already taken that new release. I don't need to wonder because it is on demand. It is on my fingertip. I can watch that movie over and over and over again as I desire because the power of internet has changed everything. There was a shifting that took place in the realms of the ideology of this world world suddenly what was impossible became possible suddenly to prove somebody's innocent became possible where before we did not know anything about dna and what dna can do suddenly cold cases suddenly people who've been accused of false crime they were able to be set free because dna understanding and education came out and was setting people out of jails free because people understood how to point the finger on the right person uh, education, uh, leaving the safe zone, changed everything. The body of Christ has to come to that place as well. Today, I want to bring you to a place that you will have to make a decision. Will you stay in the familiar, safe, past experiences, or will you have the courage to get out of the boat 
into the supernatural life. Many are missing the supernatural life that God has for them because they are holding tight in which is familiar with. They are missing the fullness of God's power because they're still hanging to which they love and makes them feel good. However, there are so many folks out there, and you are one of them, that are hungry and pushing to pass the same old, same old lifestyle. There are one all of you that are here, and some folks out there that desire and are tired of living from struggle to struggle, from battle to battle, from watching people suffer and people looking for a move of God to one that no one can disappoint. I wonder if that is you this morning to wanting to push past this level of living that we are living in. Peter was facing a situation. He had to make a choice. His past experience, education and information had trained him that in the storm, the safest place to stay is on the boat. He knew how a boat works. After all, he was the expert of the sea because he was a fisherman for many years. He knew that you don't get into the water that, that is full of rage and is not safe for you because gravity, no matter how safe the water is, gravity will draw you and take you down in the waters. He understood that the safest place in the middle of the ocean, in the middle of the waters, is to be on a boat, no matter how small it is. It is still a boat. Eleven of the disciples decided to stay on the boat and hold on which was safe to them. Hold on on which was what was comfortable to them. Hold on onto the old ideology and the, of the old ways of doing things. They did not want to have a change of mind. They didn't want to have a change of faith. They didn't want to go to the extra mile. They said, this is how I know God. Even though they experienced Jesus just a few minutes before that, before he sent them out, just before they experienced Jesus, how Jesus took the faith of a little boy and he took his lunch and fed 5,000 men and children and women, how he made a supernatural miracle, even though he the experience that God can take something or nothing and make something out of it, they still choose to know God the way they desire to know God. They still said, this is, I'm paraphrasing now, this is how I know church. Do not change the way I do church. Do not change the way I pray. Do not change the way I walk with God. Do not tell me what I need to push forward. Don't tell me what I require to go into the supernatural because the supernatural is an uncharted place for me. The supernatural means I'm going to be vulnerable and then be at the mercy of the faith, believing that God is able to do all things. But I want to be in control. I want to be in the safety. Yes, I know it is dialed. There is you, O oh God. You have said, be of good cheers and do not be afraid. But I am not going to move anywhere because I desire to stay where I am. Why is the body of Christ, why is churches not moving and shaking the city? Because we are comfortable where we are at. Millions of dollars are being spent on, on programs. Millions of dollars are being spent in the city by some major churches. We're spending money on, 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 on Sunday schools. We spend money on, on youth programs. We spend money on outreach programs. But yet, this city has not changed a bit. If anything, this city has remained and became worse than it was yesterday. Because the church decided to stay in the boat where it's safe. I like to do church 
this way. But there is God a call that he's calling us out. He says, I'm wondering if there are some folks that are hungry and thirsty to hear my voice and walk into the supernatural. And when I call unto them and they hear my voice, they don't stay in the safety zone of the boat of their, their life. But they step out of the boat and say, God, abide on me and I will come unto you. I will walk unto the water, which is impossible, will become possible with you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus saw how troubled they were. Jesus saw how these folks did not know what to do. Jesus knew that they needed a new information. And then he called, he sent them out to bring something to the forefront. He says, what I'm about to do to you, I need to leave you alone. Because it's easy for you to have faith when I'm around you. It's easy for you to come to me and say, but Lord, how can we feed these 5,000 people? And then suddenly, not you, not you who has been with me, but some little boy that doesn't even know me comes and says, take my lunch. Here's my lunch and feed people. Jesus says, I'm going to put a new information in your mind. I'm going to set you away and tell you, I'll join you on the other side. The disciples didn't even ask him, well, how are you going to get to the other side if we're taking the boat? <laughs> After much prayer time, a long time he had, he says, no, I'm going to walk on the water. Isn't it funny when we see a move, a new move of God, suddenly fear grips us. Suddenly fear and anxiety grips us. Is it really God? Is it really a move of God? Is it really God calling me into this area? We cry out and we worry and we are full of fear. The disciples were full of fear. They said, oh, there is a spirit that is about to come and get us. And Jesus says, be of good cheers. It is I that is here to set you into a new realm, into the supernatural realm. Peter looked at his friends, his 11, the other 11 disciples, and says, you know what, folks, you can do whatever you want to do. But Lord, I'm going to make an announcement to you. I'm ready to walk into the supernatural. If it's you, O God, call unto me, and I shall come. Lord, if it be thou, bide me, and I shall come to you on the water. And Jesus told him, Oh, come to me, Peter. And which was impossible suddenly became possible. Knowledge of water and gravity, gravity no longer was valid. Knowledge of boat and safety was not any more important. Who believed in him and who did not believe in him, it didn't matter any longer because he believed in the greater is he who is in him than who is in this world. He believed that if it's Christ that calls me out, he will keep me safe and he will not let me drown. However, there's a big problem we're facing as a church, we're facing as Christians. There is a big problem that we have with our faith. That's why I, saw, I titled my sermon this morning, Shifting into Supernatural Faith. Because we all have faith, we all believe, but we have a struggle that is keeping us to walk into the supernatural faith. And that problem is, that problem is that we cannot walk in the supernatural with yesterday's information. <laughs> We cannot walk into the supernatural with yesterday's education and upbringing and culture. Because if we think about what we knew, we will sink. Because the moment that Peter remembered what he knew about gravity and storms and all the things, suddenly he starts sinking. Because he forgot about who God called him to be, who God called him to enter into. He forgot that God entered him into a supernatural realm. But he's heard suddenly some folks around him telling him, are you sure God is calling you to this calling? Are you sure God is telling you to do this and to do that? Are you sure that 
God is telling us to move into a higher level in our faith. Suddenly, he started listening to a country worse voices that wasn't of God. And he looked back into his former education of what he, how he knew God. And he started sinking into the depth of his problem. And Jesus had to lift him up and say, after all that you have seen I've done, after all that you see I've done, where is thy faith? You of a little faith, come up. I will rescue you, but yet I'm telling you that you need to walk in the supernatural in order to satisfy the will of the Father. In order for you and I to shift into the supernatural faith, you need to get rid of some lies. Information that was, <laughs> that was being put in your mind. In a form that you have received it. Uh, Genesis 3, uh, 8 to 11 says these things. He says, and then they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among, amongst the trees of the garden. Uh, but the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you walking in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told you you were naked? You, you, you have, you have, eat, have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? There is a key part of this scripture that we always miss as believers, as Christians. And that key part is, who told you? Who put that information in your mind? Who told you that you're naked? Who told you that you're broke? Who told you that you're not more than conquerors? Who told you that you cannot do things, all things through Christ whom strengthens? Who told you that you are no good? Who told you will not go to college and get an education? Who told you that you're stupid? Who told you that you cannot overcome your struggle? Who told you? That's the question that God asked him. He says, I, 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 is that the fruit that you eat? Is that the information that you receive from the devil? I, didn't I tell you, do not listen to the lies of the, the, the devil that he has to tell you? Because that fruit of knowledge of good and evil will bring lies and deception with it. That, that, that the knowledge of good and evil will bring understanding that is not of me. Because it will cause you not to receive lies of the devil in your life. Because before that, that you were only walking in truth. I did not tell you that you were naked. I didn't tell you that you were sinful. I didn't tell you that you are not an overcomer. I didn't tell you that you will, you are, you're going to fall down. I didn't tell you any of these things. Who told you? And I wonder, who told you? Who told you that you cannot walk in the supernatural? Who told you that you cannot heal the sick? Who told you? that you cannot own companies? Who told you that you cannot go into the government? Who told you that you cannot change Hollywood? Who told you that you cannot stand up for God's righteousness? Who told you that you cannot do what they tell you that you can't do? Because God didn't tell you that. God didn't definitely tell you that. God didn't tell you that you are a loser. But he said, it is finished. I've done it all. You just need to walk into my supernatural ability. The problem is we have partaken of some information. We talk to some folks that are not going anywhere in their own personal lives. We hang out with some low lives. We talk with some people that are defeated folks. We talk to some folks that do not give God any room to change them. Because they are comfortable where they are at with God. They tell us things that is not even godly and biblical. For many years, I believed a, a, a saying that people were telling me. And I, and I believed it. And this is a, it's a saying that many of you might know. God only helps those who help themselves. I believe that lie. I believe that lie, but I looked through this whole Bible and I never read anywhere it says God helps those who help themselves. 
It says, oh, God helps those who depend on him, who wait upon him, who wait upon his strength and wound, wound their wings like an eagle and fly because they knew that he is their strength. He says, let the weak say, I am strong. Don't let them sit back and look at this situation. And we have accepted some lies based on our cultural upbringing, based on some of the things that we've been told. We've been told, this is how you will pray, my brother. You cannot pray without your head being covered. You cannot pray being or not being on your knees. If you really want to pray, you have to be on your knees. There is only one way to go in the throne room of God. And there is all these lies that the devil is bringing to us. Information are powerful. Information is extremely powerful. What you're listening to, what you're accepting, is going to define you. We need to stop allowing our past define who we are and keep us limited. We need to allow God to define us, to make us limitless. He says, you shall do greater works than I did. He said, my church should rise up the dead while some of them are feeding. While you're, you're clothing the naked, while Brother Vic is ministering on the side of the road here to the prostitutes, Sister Helen is healing somebody from depression. And Sister Turner is raising up the dead. And Brother James is casting off demons. He says, greater works shall you do than I did on this earth. What he meant by that, it wasn't meaning that you will do something better than I did. It says, I was limited in this fleshly vessel. I could only feed 5,000 people at the time that I was walking on this planet earth while they were sick, still waiting for me to come and heal them. But now I have multiplied myself into all of you. While I am using you to heal somebody, I'm using Using somebody else to feed somebody. I'm going to use somebody else to do something else. I'm going to release my supernatural power through the different individual vessels that I have called forth. God is making a shift this morning, a supernatural shift in your faith. And I'm not going to be any longer than this. I'm just going to tap on two other points. And I want to pray for you this morning. Because this world, this city of ours, is sick and tired of Christians that talk about God and don't manifest His power. We can't make God a liar. Church, we can make God a liar. We cannot tell him, Jehovah is my, Jehovah is Jireh, God is my provider, yet believe that I am not able to come out of my circumstances of life financially. We can't go around and preach Greater is he who is in me than who is in this world. And as soon as we hear about ISIS and all the terrorist groups and some shooting happening in our neighborhood, we start trying to flee away instead of becoming the power and the glory of God. We can't talk about God and telling them, I can do all things through Christ whom strengthens me, but yet... Say, I am not able to do this and able to do that because I don't have this ability and that ability according to my knowledge and understanding. We have to live up to the standards that we are preaching, we're talking. We need to represent Christ in the right form and shape that he has called us to be. Our flesh it's the biggest liar to our spirit. Sin entered Adam and told him, you're naked. You're impure. You're unclean. Hide yourself. Your flesh 
is your worst enemy. Your flesh will lie to you every moment, every second. Your mind is your worst enemy. Because your mind is full of information that is not coming from the Word of God. And you need to, to, to get rid of those information. You need to delete. There has to be a delete button in your spirit round that you're pressing. Delete, delete, delete. And then there has to be another program in your mind that says formatted. Format my hard drive. Format my, format my hard drive that is in here. Because you know what? One of the things that happens with computer, for those of you who understand computer, you can delete a program of a hard drive, but the information still remains in there, in the hidden compartments. But unless you format it, unless you completely erase it, it will be there. And if you have the, the, the right equipment, the right software, you can resurface all those information that you have deleted on your computer. Unless some serious erasing, some serious serious reformatting has happened to your computer the hard drive. And we do a lot of deleting in our mind. We say, I'm not this, I'm not that. But still in the background, that information lingers. Still in the background, that information is there. And suddenly the devil and his sinful nature of our flesh will bring that program system and say, do you not remember who you used to be? Don't you remember that you could not talk properly? Don't you remember what people were doing to you when you were doing this and that? And don't you remember that people do not respect you? And suddenly we go back to our old self and retreat into the defeat mentality that the enemy wants us to have. When God shifted Abraham into the supernatural faith, he was, on a, he was an old man. Uh, the meaning of his name, Abraham, meant exalted father, which was an embarrassment to him, for he was an old without any children. People used to go around and call Abraham exalted father. What an embarrassment when you don't have any children. And God says, Abraham, I'm about to do something. Abraham, I'm going to do something to you here. I'm going to shift you from the natural faith into a supernatural faith. And what I'm going to do to you is to prove to you that what I'm about to do to you is I'm going to call you Abraham. What I'm about to give you is going to be a blessing not only unto you, but generations after you to come. When you walk in the supernatural call of God, when you walk in the supernatural uh, anointing of God, it's not about you, it's about your generations to come. You're setting a blessing for generations and generations to come forward. When God changed Abraham unto Abraham, he says, I will call you now Abraham, which means father of many nations. I'm going to bring out of you what look to be bad, awesome. I'm going to make you fathers of many nations. I'm not going to call you exalted father. Because exalted father is your flesh that wants to rise up. But father of many nations is a blessing that will go forward. Man will give you the pride of life. They will call you names that will lift your pride up. Will lift down your flesh up. The man, they called him exalted father. And it became an embarrassment to him. And God says, I will remove that embarrassment and replace it with generational blessing. I will call you not exalted father, but I will call you father of nations. Nations will be blessed because of you. We are the offspring of Abraham's blessing. We are not saved because of our own good. We are having enter and access into the kingdom of God because there was a promise that was made to Abraham. God says, every nation shall be blessed because of you. He called him father of many nations even before he had a child. God was calling out of him what was hidden inside of him that he did not even know. God told him, 
that it is not you, but what is inside of you. And then God told him, in order for you to really grasp this, i got to give you some folks that can walk with you in this. I'm going to give you somebody else that has the same understanding like you. Your wife, Sarah, she's not going to be named Sarah any longer. She's going to be, in fact, moved into the supernatural realm as well. I'm going to shift her and name her Sarah. You cannot walk in the supernatural by yourself because when you walk in the supernatural by yourself, the enemy will do everything that he can do to take you down and destroy you. You need some folks that understand what it means to walk in the supernatural because there is something inside you that needs to be drawn out of you. God is trying to take out of you something that is hidden within you that you did not even know existed. Abraham did not know that there is a blessing hidden inside him that is going to be bringing generational blessing until the judgment of God will fall on this earth. He did not even comprehend that when he was walking. He even made a fun out of God. God, really me? Don't you know how old I am? Don't you know how old my wife is, oh God? You want to give me a child, oh God? And God says, yes, it is you that I'm going to take something out of you that you did not even know. That's why the writer in the book of Hebrews declares, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for, it, for by it the elders obtain a good report. Now through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so the things which are seen were not made of things which appeared. Did you get that last portion of it? Things were made out of things which do not appear. God wants to take someone that no one thinks is going to be a millionaire and rise them up and make them a billionaire. God wants to raise someone that no one ever thought is going to teach and preach the gospel and say, I'm rising it, I'm taking it out of you. Get out of you. Do not be afraid. I don't think any of you ever thought when you were born, God is going to set you up for some of the callings that he's calling you today. I don't think any of you ever thought when you're walking this walk, God is going to give you ideas and creative mind to make you who you are. But when God calls you, fear wants to grip you. When God calls you and tells you, I need you to go the distance with me, the enemy says, you can't do it because you have too many struggles. And God says, didn't I just say on the cross of Calvary, it is finished. It is done. It is over. You got the victory. God called a boy that did not know anything else beside the rope that his father gave him. A colorful rope that God gave, his father gave him, and he was loved by his father. But God gave him a vision that he's going to be one day a man of authority. Nobody believed in him. In fact, people got jealous of him. His own brothers, those who were next to, next to him, his own family become so envious of him that decided to kill him. As much as I want you to be excited this morning and shout for joy and run around for what God is doing in your life, I want to tell you that once you walk into the supernatural realm, there will be some haters that will come against you. There will be some folks who are next to you, your own family members, your own friends, good friends, that they will see you and be threatened by you. 
and want to get rid of you. But what which God calls you unto, no one can destroy. They thought they're going to kill him. They decided to sell him into slavery. <laughs> the potter's wife tried to accuse him. But he had a vision. He knew what God had placed on the inside of him. And he went from the pit to the prime minister of the greatest nation and did what God had called him to. Because he decided to be bold enough to step outside that boat. He says, I'm not going to stay in this boat any longer. This boat has kept me limited. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning, but you've been limited for too long. You've been limited for too long because you've been sitting in a boat of your own safety and you wanted to experience God the way you decide to experience God. You didn't want to give it all on to Jesus. You didn't want to believe in the things that he's calling you for. And God is saying, I want you to come out and come out of that boat. I want you to take that step into uncharted territories and see what I'm going to do for you. The big difference between a successful person, a, a visionary person, is they're not afraid to enter into uncharted territories. This is what Jabez prayed. Oh Lord, enlarge my territories. God, give me more position, give me more land, give me more grace, give me greater responsibilities. For what reason? So I can do greater works for your kingdom. Not that I will be exalted. Uh, we, we, it was an era that the churches uh, had booklets and we prayed it backwards and forward. The prayer of Jabez, oh Lord, and we, we even sing it. We start singing, oh enlarge my territory, oh Lord, because I want to do this and that and that. But we didn't even believe it. <laughs> because an enlarged territory means you got to deal with some mess. When you walk into uncharted territory, there will be some danger and vulnerabilities. It means you do not know anything anymore, what is ahead of you. You do not know what lies before you. No longer you're safe in your previous information. Now you are at the mercy of God's grace. And many of us do not want to go there. But I'm telling you, if you dare this morning to enter into that un uncharted territories with God, you will manifest greater is he who is in me than who is in this world. You will manifest I can do all things through Christ whom strengthens me. You will manifest all the promises and the blessings that God has in store for you. And it's not about you, it's about your children, it's about the generations to come, it's about your children's children, it's about thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in this heaven on this earth. Abraham allowed God to shift him into the supernatural. And we are the ones that are partakers of that blessing which was in him. What is in you this morning? What is in you that God wants to take out this morning? I want to invite you this morning to come and seek God. I want to invite you this morning to come uh, to the altar and seek the face of God. I need you to come to that place that you need to hear from heaven. What is it that, God, you have placed in me that I don't even know myself, oh God? What is it that you have placed in me that needs to be drawn out of me and manifest for your glory? What is it that, God, you have for my family in future generations? What is it, the landmark, what is the mark that you want me to leave for generations to come that will talk about, about the faith, the supernatural faith that I had? Faith. Things hoped for, 
evidence of things that are not seen. Father, what are the things that is in an unseen realm that I want to do for you? For you said to me in your word, O oh God, that no ear has heard and no eye has seen for what God has in store for me, for those who love him and seek him and, and adore him. What is it that God you have for me? Will you come this morning? Will you just come this morning, pa push past your thoughts and, and all the things and come? Because I believe that God wants to birth something supernatural in your life. He wants to birth a supernatural faith in your life. He wants to take you deeper, deeper, deeper in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.